We know it's normal to have back pain when you're pregnant, but is it normal to have back pain that persists after you have the baby? Yesterday, I talked about the case of a 35-year-old female who presented to my office three weeks after having a baby. She had a healthy baby boy, and when she was bending down to pick something out of the bassinet, she felt a sudden knife-like pain in her back that took her to her knees. It got a little better after a few weeks and taking some anti-inflammatory medications, but it was still pretty persistent, so this MRI scan was done. What we see here on the MRI is a high intensity spot in the L5S1 disc that is consistent with an annular tear. What's an annular tear? Now the intervertebral disc is the squishy stuff that sits between the bones in our spine and the outside is called the annulus. Think of it like a jelly donut. We have a hard coating around our disc which is similar to the dough but the inside is squishy jelly-like which is called nucleus pulposus. That is what makes it squishy. If you bend, like when she was bending over to pick something out of the bassinet, it can tear the back side of the disc, and that is called an annular tear. And if it tears, it can lead to a weak spot in the disc where the inside or the jelly can leak out. In her case, all she has on this MRI is that high signal intensity, which is just a sign of a tear, so there's no evidence of leaking. That outside part of the disc, called the annulus, is highly innervated, so whenever she felt that knife-like sensation, it was where that annulus was tearing. The good news is that most annular tears heal on their own, but the bad news is that they can take a long time to heal. That part of the disc is not well vascularized, so the healing process can take 18 months to up to two years. Treatment initially for annular tears is rest, as well as anti-inflammatory medications and specialized spine-dedicated physical therapy to help work on strengthening your core. The treatment is rest initially because you don't want that weak defect to allow material to leak out or cause a herniated or a slipped disc. If any of that disc does leak out, it can compress the nerve and cause sciatica. Now onto the question that I propose, why is this so common in the postpartum window? Let's go through all the reasons why because there are many reasons. Newsflash, it has nothing to do with the epidural that she had during her delivery. Number one, pregnancy hormones. In the peripartum window, there are a lot of hormones that come into play to help relax the ligaments to allow for a safer delivery. And that will also help relax the ligaments in your back and make you more prone to injury. Number two, lack of support of your abdominal wall musculature. During pregnancy, all those abdominal muscles get stretched and that causes a weak core. Right after delivery, they're extremely weak, and if that patient had a C-section, that can even increase the weakness of the abdominal wall. We also know that there will be weakness to the pelvic floor, which can increase the weakness within your core. All right, so we have lax ligaments and a weak core. This is a setup for disaster. Now let's add taking care of a baby into the mix. That includes feeding the baby. That includes bending over repetitively to change the diaper. That includes changing the sheets to the baby's bassinet, as well as what else? A lack of sleep and a whole lot of stress. So the real question is who doesn't hurt their back in the postpartum window? I really want to stress the importance of blowing the hypothesis that a lot of young women have, and that is that their epidural injection caused their chronic back pain. I wanted to point out that the epidural space is this black space right here, and the disc is this pink space right here. It's not even close. Just because it's chronologically related doesn't mean that it's causally related. Basically what I'm saying is just because the epidural happened around that same time window doesn't mean it's the reason why the back hurts. I've talked for a really long time now. What do we do about it and how do we prevent it? It's really hard to do, but I'm gonna give you a few suggestions. Number one, be extremely conscious about bending and lifting in the postpartum window. Basically be very cautious about how you bend and keeping your back straight. Don't hunch over when you're feeding the baby or when you're changing the diaper. That causes more strain on your disc. Talk to your doctor about starting postpartum core exercise training and even get referred to a physical therapist to help with this. Pelvic tilts are a really great exercise to start help strengthening your core. When your obstetrician allows you to, take a warm bath. That'll help relax your muscles in your lower back. Try not to stand for a long period of time and really get rest when you can. This is a hard one for most new moms, but ask for help when you need it. You're not alone in this. Now back to the original story. How did this 35-year-old person do after their annular tear? That 35-year-old was me. It took me about two years to get over that back injury. 
That included a lot of physical therapy and dedication towards working on building my core strength back, which honestly, I had a lack of even before I got pregnant. In my opinion, annular tears can even become a source of chronic lower back pain or discogenic back pain, and sometimes that can be surgically addressed. Another case of patient-centered, compassionate care. Stay tuned next week for another case.